we're gonna go ahead and get Dixie and Diddy a new home. But they're still kind of crazy, so I'm sure moving them is gonna be a little bit of a chore. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh my gosh. This is one of the prettiest banana ball play things I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my gosh, yep, I'm in trouble. Okay, here we go, here we go. Ah, no one's biting me. There are even islands that actually eat the rhino iguana. Please don't bite me, please don't bite me. Oh my gosh. Good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog and I'm gonna start the day out feeding my beautiful girl Bella here a couple raspberries and she seems to really be liking it and actually the reason I want to start with Bella is because there's gonna be some rhino iguanas going on in this vlog today we're actually moving Diddy and Dixie into a brand new enclosure today so we're gonna be making that out see if we can start habituating them a bunch more and then it's just gonna be an amazing day but for now I'm gonna spend a little time with my girl Bella and then we're gonna go ahead and get Dixie and Diddy a new home. Diddy and Dixie are getting so big. This cage was perfect for them when they were babies. They grew up, they love it, they have lots of areas to climb and stuff like that, but certainly they're at that stage where it's time to move them. They need to get a bigger enclosure. Diddy over here is, seems like he's like twice the size of Dixie. He has just gotten so huge, but that's normal. Males will always get a little bit bigger, but the point is we've been working with them a lot, and particularly Diddy will now come out on our lap, but they're still kind of crazy, so I'm sure moving them is going to be a little bit of a chore. I'm not going to lie to you, but they're going to get a nice huge habitat and then we'll be able to redo this cage and get an animal over here we don't know what it's going to be yet but it'll be cool that we'll have this environment over here open for something else for now i'm going to take you over to the habitat that we're about to redo uh give you kind of my thought process on that and then later on we'll go ahead and move these guys in there so here's the habitat that we're looking at right now i mean it's kind of the only move up that we have we go from their size cage up to four foot by four foot by four foot gauges that's the way it goes but so we did a couple moving around to free up this cage i think this kind of works really well because they love to climb so they're going to climb up here they're going to use these branches right here to kind of you know just hang out they can get close to the light the basking light the uv light stuff like that but then they're going to have some areas down here now these guys are actually from kind of more rocky areas and and dry forest areas so we don't really want them to only be able to walk on the ground here i'm going to go ahead and put some kind of rocks in here so i've got a couple rocks that universal rocks has sent up for us here and i'm going to see if i can't maybe put them in there design it to where they have a little bit of area that they feel comfortable in but at the same time they'll be happy to be out and as we work on it more and more coming out for the public because they're finally to that age where they're going to be able to start coming out and unlike Bella I'm hoping they'll be able to be handled by people Bella just likes to scratch up trust me my whole shoulder here is always scratched up every single time I have her out so uh, I'm just going to do that and I think that this is going to work out really good and then they can grow a lot eventually they'll have to move up even into a larger habitat like an eight foot plus habitat but for now for the next year or so I think this is going to work out good we'll add some features and then we'll get this thing rocking getting down to the nitty-gritty when it comes to colubrids we got one little baby snow texas rat snake that is actually het for leucistic scaleless so that's pretty amazing we got one two three four more eggs to hatch in this clutch but i am absolutely amazed at that again i had mentioned before that i was really surprised by the outcome of that because it was a snow texas rat bred to a leucistic meaning that i didn't expect to produce anything but normal looking snakes that were het for all the albino and snow but also het for leucistic and we ended up producing snows het for leucistic that was a really weird outcome regardless we also have a big Big old swatch here of Pueblin milk snakes. Uh oh, one's go. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh my gosh! Please don't, please don't. Okay, all right. Oh my gosh, yep, I'm in trouble. Okay, here we go, here we go. Ah, no one's biting me. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, that was that was maybe my worst outing of the entire year. I had that lid off for like all of about 10 seconds and then they were all over the place. They were biting me. They were running all over the place. Uh, so anyways, apricot well and milk steak's really beautiful. <laughs> Again, that's it for colubrids for the day. So jumping into it, we have this kind of flat rock right here, which I think is gonna be really good because Bella loves to lay on her log as well as on that kind of rock over there. So I think this is gonna be really good. I think I'm gonna fit it right in this back corner, if I'm not mistaken. I think this will be kind of a good spot. Plus there's some foliage back there too i just have to figure out how to fit it exactly and it doesn't fit real good that way so we'll go ahead turn around this way see if we can fit it in here like this oh yeah that's perfect that is absolutely perfect and the thing i like about this right now is that you'll see that they can get up here but there's also some foliage in back that they can kind of hide a little bit because when rhino iguanas are a little bit smaller they're actually a little bit timid so we wanted to have some secure spots so i think they'll, they'll spend a lot of time over here but also kind of go in the back over there again i envision them climbing up here and spending time up here as well so i'm going to go ahead and take this big piece here and give them an option at the front of the cage too and i think it'll fit right over here if i'm not mistaken Let's see what we got 
Oh yeah, that is absolutely perfect. I think that, and this is a weighted rock, it's pretty heavy, so they're not gonna be able to push it around. And I think what's gonna happen here is this is give them an opportunity to climb up here, they can perch up here, perch up here, but they can also get to this vine to kind of crawl around, give them lots of options. And then they even have a little area back here that they can go if they wanna get on the ground and really have some privacy. Again, lots of options for them, heat, light, kind of getting away, some kind of secluded spots, so on like that. That gives them that confidence that they're gonna have so that they're not afraid because they know they always have places to go. So I think this literally is about it. You know, I think that we're just do a couple little touches. I have another little rock here, but I'm a little bit worried if I start to add more, I'm not sure. Not sure if they have, yeah, maybe that works, just giving them another option right there. I mean, why not, right? You know, they can jump up here, they can perch up here. And that's what I'm kind of thinking in my head is that where are they gonna actually sit? Just like Bella always sits right on that same spot, I wanna give them a lot of options. So I think this is good. So I'm gonna go ahead, just give a little bit more spruce up here, see if I wanna add anything else. And then uh, later on in the vlog, we'll go ahead and put them in there and see how they like it. I have to take a quick break to show you this. I remember when these guys actually pipped out and we cut the clutch. This is ridiculous. This is actually a banana cine and she pinstripe and oh my gosh this is one of the prettiest banana ball pythons i've ever seen in my entire life that thing is just on fire and the contrast oh doggy that is incredible and its sibling is pretty awesome too and this one is crazy too this is actually a banana cine woma pinstripe so it doesn't have the enchi in it but oh my gosh these two are just the oranges and yellows and pinks that come through are ridiculous and then the white up the sides just really tops it off so I had to take a quick break from everything because when I saw these guys shed out, I was blown away. They are incredible. I tell you what, looking down here, there are a ton of insane snakes now that they've shed and had a meal or two. Let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do like a ball python morph update in the vlog. I'll do that for you guys because there's some crazy stuff, but only if you guys want it, let me know in the comments. I know I keep reminding you guys, but anniversary is coming up here at the Reptarium. The 22nd of this month, 22nd of September, we have a 12 to 8 party happening here. I'm gonna have outside stuff because it's going to be amazing we're going to try to make it amazing again you can come meet everyone in the crew 12 to 8 have a good time so definitely try to make it there again i'm sorry i keep reminding you i just want this to be an awesome awesome celebration a little species spotlight on my girl bella or rhino iguanas that is these are actually a cyclura cornuda now the cornuda is actually latin for horn and of course these guys have that bony ridge that basically looks like a horn hence their name rhino iguanas they're actually from the islands of the hispaniolas into haiti and even even the Dominica. Now they are endangered down there and there's a couple reasons for that. Certainly destruction of the habitat, also people moving into the area and there are even islands that actually eat the rhino iguana. These guys are herbivores so the majority of their diet is going to be vegetation. Although they are opportunistic hunters and they will eat like snakes and lizards and certainly a bunch of insects. We all know Bella loves her superworms. She loves hornworms and stuff like that. But the majority of her diet is going to be fruits and vegetables. With Without overdoing on the fruit side but interestingly enough when they do eat fruit they actually help in the germination of the seed so it's interesting is that a seed will actually germinate quicker once it's passed through the system of an iguana and it looks like my girl Bella here is wanting to go back in her cage but not only will it germinate quicker when it moves through the body of an iguana but they actually help in distributing the seeds along the island which is pretty interesting they eat the fruit the seeds are in them and then they move around and then after they go to the bathroom those seeds will actually germinate wherever they're laid so they're actually helping and growing kind of like bees do with pollinating things which is pretty interesting Bella is three and a half years old which means she's actually just getting to the point where she's reproductively able to lay eggs we're probably not going to breed Bella but a typical female will lay anywhere from three to 35 eggs believe it or not and typically it takes about three months for them to hatch the baby rhino iguanas can be a little bit temperamental and a little bit psycho but as they get bigger as you can see with my girl Bella here she is absolutely stunning and the thing that's amazing is although they're endangered in their native habitat really the efforts of people like Ty Park and other people in captivity there's a numerous amount of these animals being produced and they are available into the pet trade which is pretty awesome but hopefully we'll eventually be able to repopulate the wild believe it or not there's only 10 to 16,000 rhino iguanas in the wild 
and there's probably closing in that number in captivity. So it's really a great kind of species survival story with the captive propagation of these guys. Regardless, rhino iguanas are absolutely stunning. Now the fun part is to actually move Diddy and Dixie. Again, just like Bella, right now they're not very good at handling, okay? So I don't wanna get bit, I don't wanna get scratched up too much, I don't wanna stress them out too much. They're getting good about when we're offering food coming out and even sitting on our lap. But when it comes to actually taking them out, I'm not sure. So Dixie's up front here. I'll see if I can get her first or if I get Diddy. I'm not 100% sure who I'm gonna get first. Ooh, he is mad, my bud. Okay, okay, all right, I got, I got him, I got him. Okay, it's okay, buddy, it's okay. Please don't bite me, please don't bite me. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's okay, 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 okay. See, what I'm trying to do is not restrain him. I definitely have to get him, and I'm hoping that he, okay, now he's calm. And that's what happens is that rhino guanas oftentimes go into like a spaz mode, and then once they stop spazzing, they're actually pretty good. So, okay, we've got Diddy. He's definitely just a little bit nervous. He doesn't know what's going on, but you can see he's starting to really get good. This is what we have to do. We have to spend a lot of time with him, just getting him to the point where he's really kind of understanding that he's got nothing to fear with us. So we're gonna go ahead and release him into his new habitat and see what he thinks. Look at him look around. He's just looking around like, what's going on? And this is yours, buddy. You can do whatever you want in here. So we'll go ahead, we'll keep an eye on him for a little bit, and then we'll just see how it goes. We'll go ahead and get Dixie in a second here. I'm gonna have Diddy have just a little bit of time on his own, and then I'll go ahead and put Dixie in. So there you go. See, you have all that space, buddy. How awesome is that? Diddy seems to be settling in. He kind of found a spot that he was real happy with, so I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna go ahead and get Dixie now, and I'll be honest with you, she's a much more difficult animal, typically. She usually likes to bite and run. Come on, girl. it's okay, girl, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's all right, baby, it's all right, it's okay. Okay, and again, I'm just trying to run her a little bit, and she's peeing on me, and now she's gonna run. I'm just gonna try to run her through my hands a little bit so she doesn't wanna bite me. Okay, she's starting to calm down just a little bit, See, Dixie, it's okay. I know you pooped all over the place. It's okay, girl. You're completely fine. And it's crazy how quickly they mellow out like that. You know, they go from being like completely out of control, but I got poop all over me now. Thanks a lot, girl. Let's go ahead, get her in. And hopefully she's gonna be really happy with her new digs for sure. So let's go over here, see where Diddy is. Diddy is exactly where we left him. And again, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna let her crawl off my hand, find her spot, and let her decide where she wants to go. See, Diddy went way up there, he's right up. I knew he was gonna spend some time up there by the light. I think they're gonna love that basking spot up there. Then we'll let Dixie just kind of settle in as well. So I think this is gonna be great. I'll keep an eye on them over the day, but let me know what you guys think about their new digs. I'm excited, because now they can grow big. We can work with them a whole lot more because they're right here, easy to work with. We can come in, hand feed them, pet them. Get that habituation and that relationship going just like we did with Bella. But like I said, Diddy in particular, our relationship is we wanna be able to take him out and handle him and not have him rip us up. So that's gonna be a work in progress. But nevertheless, now they have their new big habitat. I think they're gonna love it. Super cool to get Diddy and Dixie their new digs. I am excited about them and now we can really work with them. By the way, you might notice that uh, there's some other inhabitant in Lucy's cage right now. That is right. Noah is finally doing the Lucy 24 hour challenge. So he's gonna be in there all day, supervised the entire time. Don't worry about that. I'll put a link in the description. You definitely wanna go check that out. As for now, if you enjoyed today's video, here's another cage building video a cool playlist over here. And if you go right here, can you subscribe and turn those post notifications on? Have a wonderful day. Make sure to tune into Noah's 24 hour challenge. Be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.